How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here, and I'm here to show you exactly how you can set up your G Hub. If you have a Logitech mouse, such as I do, like a Logitech G502 Hero, that's the exact one I have, or you have a Logitech G Pro, or if you have any other Logitech mouse, it doesn't have to be any gaming mouse, it could also be the MX. If you have a mouse like that, you can use Logitech's G Hub to set all your different macros and different buttons for your mouse. And it's really simple to do, and I'm gonna show you exactly where you download Logitech's G Hub. Because when you first purchase this mouse, it will not come with the software automatically. Once you plug in the mouse, your PC will recognize it just as a generic mouse. I'm gonna have the link right down below on how to get Logitech's G Hub. So depending on your OS, you're gonna download it for what you need it for, whether it's Windows 10, or Mac OS, or maybe you already have Windows 11, just download it for Windows 10. Once you download the G Hub, you're gonna just open it up, click yes, and then you're just gonna set it up. It's practically gonna be just forward, forward, forward until you eventually get to the launch page. Once you get into G Hub here, you're gonna open it up and it's gonna look something like this. Just like how you see my mouse right here, you're gonna see the G502 uh, mouse. Now it's doesn't really seem like much. It just says desktop default. And this program actually has some really excellent features, especially if you create a login, it makes it even better because you can actually save all your information through your username. So for example, if I'm using it, this mouse on my workstation and I transfer over to my gaming station, to my gaming rig, then I can transfer the mouse settings that I have from my workstation. That's pretty nifty, right? First, I'm gonna show you the overlay around on how to use it, because first you're gonna see just the typical G Hub symbol. It's not gonna do anything, as you notice the, when you hover the mouse around it, it doesn't kind of click over. But you'll notice that once you hover your mouse over the desktop default, you'll see a pointing finger. Once you enter, that's your active profile here, and you can actually set different type of profiles for your mouse. You can have so many different profiles you could set it up for different programs you could set up for your games and it becomes really useful and can give you an advantage especially if you're gaming or if you're using it for photo editing video editing graphical design there is so much flexibility when it comes to logitech software of course you have your g hub settings here and this would be your username if you log in so I just logged into my account here, and as you notice, it'll pop up and it'll tell you the different uploads, downloads, and everything that you have. So you can actually add everything that you want. You can add your gear here, and it shows that you own this mouse. So down here on the buttons down below, you'll notice you'll see see newest lighting effects. That's how you get different RGBs for your mouse or for your keyboards, depending on what you're using the software for. For this tutorial, I will specifically explain a little bit deeper in the mouse side. You also can explore different profiles, gaming profiles, and you can also visit the Logitech G website. So most of the settings you're more than likely gonna use. We're gonna go into the first part, which is active profile. You're gonna notice the different games and applications that are on your desktop. So for example, you have desktop here, you have Apex Legends, I have Call of Duty Vanguard. It knows that I currently do not have these games installed on my PC on this workstation right now. So you can actually set it for a specific game or to a specific program to whichever you set it to. So let's just go into the, the desktop one for now, which is the default of this mouse. You'll also notice down here you have scripting, which you won't really have to, which is a little bit more for advanced users. You have share and you do have duplicate. So we're just gonna go into the default here and it goes right back to the screen here. If you wanted to switch out your profile here, you just go back into here and we can go into this Halo Infinite profile, which is the default for this one. So the really amazing thing is you can actually add different configurations if you want to. 
you can add a profile for the selected app so you can actually create three different four different profiles especially if it's game if it's more flexible such as a mmo rpg or a different type of editing style that you would use for premiere you just click into your profile as you notice it says now halo infinite and that's the default for it so let's go back here to the desktop first and we're going to click into that profile and once you click into that profile you can click into the mouse so once you click into the mouse you'll notice that it has the this is practically the default settings you have your primary click you have your middle click you have your secondary click and it shows each and everything about your mouse now you can easily change it out if you so choose to and you can to look onto the side of your mouse you just simply click the left side so you have dpi shift which is a feature you're not going to really use if you're on your desktop and forward and back which is a favorite of everybody's so let's say i want to change out my dpi shift i just click it here and i want to give it a command like i'm going to use it for close tab so all i have to do is drag it up here now when i use this button for my desktop it will close the tab if i'm in a browser such as i'm currently on this still on this launch page i press that button now automatically closed so you can make your mouse a lot more intuitive this way and here is another setting that you can use too you can go into the forward side now let's not go into the forward side because i kind of like that to be set up the way it is but on your desktop, you're not really going to use DPI up or DPI down because it's not a first person shooter. So we're going to go here. We're going to change the DPI up. You can give it a key, keystroke if you, if you would like, such as if you like for it to be caps lock or control or delete, you can set it for that. But I have no idea why you would want to set it for that unless you're going to be using it for something like a program. But for on desktop use or typical desktop use, you might want to prefer such things like an action. So let's say I want it for my Discord here, and I just want to do it for Def and Self. You can also create different macros. If you want to create a new one, you just click Create Macro. And for example, we'll call this copy, even though it's already in the system. You can just do it as a sequence. We press that plus button we click record keystrokes because that's what we would like it to do and then control copy stop so now we created that command and you can save it and you now you created a macro for yourself that easy and all you would have to do if you want to set it is you simply drag it onto the top of it and it will create that macro and that is the one that was created. That is one of the really nice features that you can create your own macros, you can create your own ideas, you can have your own setups, and this could be really useful, especially when it comes to gaming. So let's create another macro here, and we'll call this paste. And now you can set it to toggle if you would like, which is continu continuous loop. You can repeat it while you hold it, or you can just uh, click no repeat, it has that type of flexibility to where you can create your macro now if off a macro you go back into system you can set back your default settings or different ideas that you would prefer to set up your mouse so you can set it for volume mute you can set it to audio cycle to lighting to everything that you could possibly think of with your mouse this is everything that is in assignments here let's go to sensitivity and you can set your different DPI speeds. You won't really need these many DPI speeds. So typically I like to set it at 1200. So you can actually, if you don't want it, you just put it into the side, put it in the side, throw it outside, and then it just leaves one single speed. Now you can adjust the speed if you like, if you prefer it a little bit quicker, or if say, if you change your mind and that you just wanted to have these extra settings maybe you need it the extra speed you just click onto the bar and another option will appear it's practically your cursor that you're moving around and that is your sensitive sensitivity for your mouse here the last setting here is light sync 
and how fast you would like your lights to respond on your mouse. So you can set it to cycle, the brightness, you can sync your light zones. So for your logo, let's say you want, you like this yellow, yellowish, greenish, bluish, this rainbow effect, you can do it that way. Let's go breathing and let's make the color say red. And that simple, you'll have your mouse blinking red. Once you go, another feature that I do also got to mention is if you go back in the assignments here, which is also a really important feature to know is if you look down here on default and you'll see G shift. If you're curious what this whole setting is, you can switch default to G shift. And what that will do is it will automatically switch your profile over to the other program, meaning if I go into my profile here, and if I had Apex Legends installed on this workstation, then when I open up Apex Legends, that default setting will appear. So I won't get the desktop view. I won't get the desktop mode for my Logitech mouse. Instead, it will go into Apex mode. You don't even have to shift profiles via software it will actually swap over the profile for you. If I look at my settings at Vanguard here, you can see exactly how different they will be. You can go into the assignments and go into commands, and then you can, it's much more easier to select what you wanna do here. So if I wanna se select my tactical equipment, I could set it up here. I could just easily set it up here. And I'll say tactical equipment. Now, I, if I want my field upgrade, I can set it up here, lethal weapon here. So let's use my lethal weapon, and then I can flip over the mouse, and then I can use other things such as my, like I like to use melee. So you can actually search for the command if you wanted to, and there it is. I will drag melee over here. I like my DPI shift, reload back here, and now I don't, I have less keys to hit on the keyboard, and I will play a lot better because of it. For example, like I like to set my keys to these square brackets here. And the reason why I like to use these square brackets, this is me for me personally when I zoom into the scope. So that way, if I, I can side scroll on the, the zoom of the scope, and so that way it will click into it instead of actually just going into a fixed toggle mode for zoom in. Let's say you wanna download a profile for your game. You don't wanna create one yourself. You wanna kind of explore some. So you go into that game and profile here and you can actually look up different settings, very popular settings that you want for, say you want something for Halo. You don't like your Halo settings. And here we go, 47, we have this G502 mouse, so we'll download that. All right, so let's go to the Halo Infinite side here. And let's take a look at this profile. And as you can see, he has set the parameters for this mouse already. And you could try him out to see if you like it or not. And the nice thing is you could always customize on it if you want to. But if you want it set to G sync, make sure G shift, make sure you do. So that way it automatically sets it to once you enter Halo. Another good thing to know is that you can go into G hub settings here and then you can check for updates and it will do that for you. And Logitech is actually really good when it comes to updating your software. And it's one of my most favorite softwares to use because it is really simple to use and you can practically create anything that you would like or can think of for your mouse. So I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in getting a Logitech mouse, make sure you check out in the description box down below as I have them listed at the best price. And make sure if you know anyone that wants to know how to set up their G hub, make sure you share this very video with them. And if you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for all the newest updates. Make sure to follow my Twitter handle right here. So fan band guys, what do you think of Logitech's G hub? 
Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo. Signing out.